I am sitting in my bedroom that has yet to be remodeled, so it is so freaking ugly in here. Like the walls, like who chose this wall color? Like it's so bad. I was thinking, I was like, oh, should I film this in my studio? Should I film it outside again? And I was just like, I'm literally the most comfortable on my bed. So I'm just gonna sit here, film it. I just put some skincare on. We're gonna let it soak in while I film this. I thought I would try and maybe get like organized and like write down everything that I wanted to talk about. But I decided that I would just rather let it flow, like a conversation kind of, and just say what comes to my mind uh, without having to really think about it. So this m video might be a little long, um, but think of it as a podcast maybe. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my experience. Um, then you guys had a bunch of questions, that, some really good questions that I wanted to answer as well if I don't cover it like within what I talk about. And then I wanted to give you guys some tools um, for something else, which I'll talk about. Um, Okay, so if you stumbled upon this video and have like no idea, um, hopefully, by the way, I don't get interrupted. Nick has been at work for the last, he's been on a 96. Um, Nick is my boyfriend, he's a firefighter and um, he's been at work for four days straight. So he might pop up at any moment, I'm not really sure. But um, if you didn't know, I had a missed miscarriage Oh gosh, my time perception is so off, but it feels like it was like two and a half months ago now is when I had my DNC. So a missed miscarriage, a lot of you didn't know what that was. I also have a video where that's very raw um, where I talked about this like right after my DNC and before and stuff. So if you wanna watch that, I will link it for you in the description box below. That's kind of the place to start, but you can definitely watch this too. Um, so I had a missed miscarriage, which a lot of you in that video had no idea what it was until you saw my video. And some of you were experiencing a missed miscarriage literally at the same time as my video went live. So it was, you know, really cool to like read your DMs and stuff and like be able to talk to some of you that were going through the same exact thing. And um, one of the girls even DM'd her again today. Like I set a, I put a calendar um, reminder in my calendar to like follow up with her on the day of her DNC. And I reached out to her to see how she's doing and stuff. So I don't know, it was just really cool to like, be a part of some of your journeys and like help, you know, in any way. So I'm really stoked to Leo, Leo careful. We have like this screen on our um, door and he like pushes his way through. It's like magnetic. <laughs> um, so anyways, it was really cool to like, like I'm glad that that video helped some of you. Um, that's, those aren't dirty panties. He's, I have like a little laundry pile over here and he's like smelling it. Like, is any of this dirty that I can totally like lick and be disgusting? Go lay down. You fucking gross. Sounds like Piper's doing something she's not supposed to be. Anyways, we're out in the country. There's all sorts of noises. So, gosh, where do I start this? Um, so a missed miscarriage. A missed miscarriage is basically when you don't have the typical red, um, period basically coming out um, where when you're pregnant and that happens like in the middle of the night or whatever, you basically know that you just had a miscarriage and you lost your baby. So, you know, you always see it in movies and it's very dramatic and stuff. Um, but I stopped having some of the symptoms that I was having. And so, I don't know, I just like had this bad feeling that it wasn't progressing. And so a missed miscarriage is basically when you miscarry, but your body still thinks you're pregnant. So it doesn't get rid of the dead cells. So um, now I wanna talk a little bit about the DNC too. Like um, I know this, I'm a little off track here. This is more about like the healing process, but it's kind of all, all a part of it. Oh Jesus, she's swimming. Oh no. Piper Kershaw, get out of the pool. You're, oh, your dad's gonna beat your butt. Gotta get my camera and take a picture of this though. She's freaking in the jacuzzi. You better not go inside that house. You better not shake near my phone one more time. <sighs> Nick taught Piper how to swim, which is awesome, but <sighs> she likes to go swimming on her own now and then come in the house. Thankfully, we're remodeling, so it's not a huge deal. But when we're done with the remodel, 
if that bitch ass comes in soaking wet from the pool and gets on my couch or something, I might have a motherfucking heart attack. Where were we? Uh, okay, so DNC. <clears throat> um, if you are going through a miscarriage or have had a miscarriage, first of all, I'm really sorry. I was the type of person that when, I shouldn't say the type of person, but like basically when a friend of a friend or someone would tell me like, oh, they just had a miscarriage or something, I would just be like, I don't really understand what the big deal is. Like, obviously I would never say this to them because you never, you don't know what people are going through. She's in the motherfucking pool again. Don't you even look in here. You are soaking wet. She just keeps letting herself in the jacuzzi and she's just like waiting around in it when I walk out like, oh, this is nice. Bad girl. I just kind of thought like, okay, why are they so upset about it? Like they didn't even know, like literally they were like five weeks or eight weeks. And you really like, obviously I kept those like judgmental thoughts to myself because I would never want to hurt anyone. So I would just keep them to myself, obviously. Um, but you really don't know until you know, like going through it. I was like, if I, I went in for what was supposed to be like my first prenatal appointment and I was thinking to myself, all right, well, if there is no heartbeat, I think I'll be fine. I'll have to sort it out like my feelings or whatever, but it was really tough. I like almost started crying in the room and I think it really depends on like so many factors, like where you're at in life, like if you really wanted to have a child right now or if you didn't. And like I said in my last video, there's literally no right feelings for like going through this or going through something like this. Um, it is very common, uh, but that doesn't mean it's easy by any means. Um, you know, the one of the things that helped me through the most was telling myself that and reassuring myself that it obviously wasn't God's will for me to have that child. And as sad as it is, there may have been something wrong down the road. Maybe I would have had complications that would have resulted in my death or the child's death during labor, like who knows, but it wasn't meant to be. And so it didn't happen. And it doesn't make it any hard or any less hard. Like it's very hard emotionally. I, um, my DNC, I want to talk a little bit about that because it was very expensive. Um, even if you have healthcare, it's very expensive. I have had a DNC in the past. It wasn't for a miscarriage. I'm not going to go into that, but in my very, very late teens, early twenties. Um, and I had it at Planned Parenthood and it was the easiest thing almost I ever did. I was talking to them while it was happening. I hardly felt any cramping. It was free. Uh, or I think I paid like $300 or something like that, which is like a drop in the bucket compared to what I'm paying now for like the DNC because at the hospital they put you under. And um, that was kind of like the worst part about all of it, other than the emotional and physical aspects of it. Like, I don't know, just like waiting there to go under and to do it. It was just very like dramatic, which I wanted it to be less dramatic, you know, because everything emotionally was so dramatic for me. Um, so I, came back and I didn't talk about this in my last video much, but I won't get too graphic, but I feel like everyone's a little bit different when it comes to a miscarriage. Um, especially if it's a missed miscarriage and you have to have a DNC. Um, I went through probably like five pads a day. I had to put two actually so that the blood wouldn't come out the front or the back. Um, it was very clumpy. Like I would pull on my pants to go pee and like a clump would fall out on the toilet seat. Like it was gross. Um, but it is what it is. Um, I was, I felt fine for the most part for the next like four days, I would say. Um, about the third day I had some cramping as your body's like trying to get rid of all of it. I was kind of told by someone that there shouldn't have been a lot of clumping because that's kind of what they got out when they go in there. Cause they kind of like clean out your uterus. Um, I was also very, um, comforted by the words of others when they said everyone's different too. So like what made me feel good and better and helped me heal may not be the same for you. Everyone is totally different because I had a conversation with a friend of mine and she was like, see, I hated when people said that to me. And it was funny because I was like, well, I hated when people said that to me, like what made her feel good. So everyone's a bit different. Um, and so it made me feel good when people would tell me, well, I knew someone or one of my friends had a, um, 
a miscarriage and then they were pregnant a month later. So that made me feel really good because going through a miscarriage, I realized that I want to be pregnant now. Like I am ready to have a baby. I'm ready to be pregnant. <clears throat> and that was one cool thing about it that it solidified for me is that like I knew from that moment on, like I was ready. Cause I had already like wrapped my head around it. Like you should see my Pinterest homepage. It is just like babies galore, like this baby trick and this tip and this thing and this outfit and this cool thing. So it is literally like, and then the hardest part for me after was I, well, a few things. I didn't realize that I was going to go into like almost like a bit of a depression. Like it was really hard for me to even like want to get out of bed. I just felt like I couldn't even do the one thing that I was supposed to do. And it was hard for me too, because Nick as caring and thoughtful as he tried to be, didn't understand where I was coming from and didn't understand. And he didn't seem to, he didn't seem emotional about it at all. And again, everyone's totally different. So I don't judge him for that, but it did make it hard for me because I was just like, do you even fucking care? Like, I don't get it. And so you have to almost train your significant other to like be able to help you through this period. And I, yeah, so like I would say for like a good two, three weeks, I was just like, you know, depressed. And I was just like, why can't I do, like I just felt um, incompetent as a woman, I guess. And I think a lot of people struggle with that, whether they can't have children or whether they've had miscarriages. I mean, I've read your DMs and some of you had had, one girl said she had five miscarriages and I was just like, holy hell, like, I'm so sorry. Like, gosh, after that, like, it just almost seems like it would become routine, but I don't think it would get any easier because that is a child, that is a soul that is no longer there or able to like live and thrive. So it is very difficult. Um, so another thing that really helped me too, other than people telling me that they knew someone that had a miscarriage and it's actually supposedly more likely to, um, to get pregnant right after, I guess, because everything in there is cleaned out. And like, once you get back to your normal cycle, it's great. Um, I started having sex again, like five days later. Um, it was a little earlier, supposed to wait like 10, but I felt fine. I listened to my body, um, before, during and after. So I was fine. Um, everyone's different, everyone heals differently and stuff. But another thing that helped me that people said was like, give yourself grace that, and I kept telling myself that cause I was like in my head about like, oh, I'm supposed to feel this way or I'm supposed to be doing this. Why can't I get out of bed? Like, and then beating myself up even further. But it really helped when people said, give yourself grace. Like your hormones are so fucked up from when you're pregnant. Like they're just all over the place. You're probably batshit crazy. I was, I was a crazy lunatic bitch. And your significant other is just like, what the fuck? Like, I'm just trying to help. I recommend letting yourself feel those feelings. Like, do not try and shove them under the rug because you think you're not supposed to cry or you're supposed to be okay because people make it seem like it's not that big of a deal. It's a big deal. And if it's a big deal to you, then who fucking cares what everyone else thinks? If it's a big deal to you, that's all that matters because guess what? You're your number one and you have to watch out for yourself. You can't rely on someone else to do that for you. You have to do it for you. So buy the junk food that you want. Uh, make sure you're on a multivitamin, drink tons and tons of water. You can sprinkle some alcohol in there. I did too. Um, if you can get yourself to work out, uh, cardio, getting fresh air, working out releases endorphins and helps you feel better, whether you like realize it or not. So that was really hard for me to get myself to do, but I would try to do walks and stuff like that. And you know what? I continued looking at baby stuff on Pinterest. Cause I was like, fuck it. I'm going to be pregnant again. ASAP. So like, let's keep, I'm going to keep this going. I'm going to keep this train going. So that was one thing. And then I also watched, um, a bunch of trash TV shows that I absolutely love that really helped. Um, and I kind of just laid in bed when I felt like it, like if I didn't feel like getting up, I didn't. Um, and you know, I just did what made me feel better. And a lot of times for me, that's food. Food is like one of my favorite things. And I just let myself eat a cup of noodles or like whatever I felt like eating. And we went to a couple wineries and did some fun things like that. Um, but you got to give yourself grace, like let yourself feel those feelings. If you don't let yourself cry, 
I mean, I would cry uncontrollably some days, just like, what the f like, you know? And I just would lay in bed and just be so like upset. And I just like allowed myself to cry and you have to allow yourself to like really feel those emotions. Don't be afraid of them. Like let it take you over. Um, it's a stress cycle that you need to complete. And if you don't allow yourself to feel these feelings, you're not healing from it. You're basically just shoving it under the rug and it's going to come out later. And you know, it's not healthy to deal with feelings that are so intense. Like you need to, allow yourself some grace and allow yourself time to deal with those feelings. And another thing I wanted to talk about is this period of time is very difficult on any relationship. And I highly recommend that you, um, try to keep yourself in check and how you're treating your partner. Um, because I'm sure that they're trying their hardest. Their goal is to make you happy and it sucks to see someone that you love going through something so difficult. So, try to be patient with them. And while you're laying in bed or doing whatever it is you're doing in the bath, whatever like floats your boat. Um, I have some great books that I want to talk to you about that I have found, um, awesome for my self-help journey, my relationships, uh, friendships, mostly romantic, but, um, that I highly, highly recommend that could be a really great thing for you to utilize and read, um, during some of the downtime during your healing. Um, so I'm going to grab those and I will show them to you. Here are the books that I highly recommend. Okay. I have read both of these. So this first one is called Simply Feminine. She actually lives in San Diego, which is rad. This book is super necessary in today's society. I feel like, um, I feel like men are afraid of asking a woman if, uh, he can help get her bag out of the overhead bin and, you know, an airplane because so many women are like, I can do it myself. And this is kind of like almost like an old school way of looking at things. But we as women don't realize how powerful our femininity is. Like it is something that's so beautiful that men just are so captivated by and controlled by. And we just piss it away and don't ever use it. So this book is so rad. I love this book. I'd actually like to start reading it again. I highly recommend this book. I will link you guys to all of these in um, the description box below. I've recommended this book to strangers that I've heard talking about. Oh, I just got engaged, but we're having some problem. I'm like, read this motherfucking book, read this book and get back to me because you are going to thank me. This book has so many answers. You want to learn how to make a man fall head over heels for you? This is it. And this is how you make a man feel respected also by making them feel masculine. Um, and this book is awesome. Obviously I'm talking about traditional, um, male, female relationships. Um, okay. And this book is, so all of these books I'm talking about share the same philosophy. And actually when I was looking for a counselor for, um, my relationship, ships me. Um, I basically would ask them like, Hey, what's your philosophy on like relationships, like man, woman, like, do you, how do you feel about like, instead of like telling your partner all the things that they're doing wrong, like I prefer to like what I've read in these books is expressing like what you want because men's goal is to make you happy. That's their number one goal. And so I, if, if, if a counselor wasn't on that same page with me, like it wasn't going to work. So this, this, um, book is called the empowered wife. Again, same as the last one. Um, this will open your eyes in so many different ways. Obviously I'm not a wife, uh, but I'm in a very serious relationship. And so all of these books, whether it's about marriage, whatever, they still apply. Um, this book is all about how to, it's, it, it talks about feminine energy. It all connects. It all feeds into one another. This talks about, um, I'll, I'll talk more about these books in, in my podcast, um, that's coming up soon. Uh, we've recorded a few episodes already. Um, it's called, yeah, no, I know. So you can follow us on Instagram. I'll leave that below too, but, um, I'll go more into depth about this, but basically it's the six surprising secrets for attracting your husband's time, attention, and affection. And this is basically how to make a man absolutely adore you. And it's not a trick. It's not a game. It's just respecting them and showing respect and the differences between women and men, how women need to feel loved and nurtured and men need to feel respected over being loved. So this book is, I highly recommend it as well. Like this book is awesome. Same as the other one. I'd like to start rereading this again. When I finish this next one, I'm going to show you. 
So <clears throat> how to improve your marriage without talking about it. I came across this on Amazon because it was recommended because I have these two and I have like seven highly, uh, seven habits of highly effective people, etc., which is also an amazing book helps with relationships, workplace, all that kind of stuff. It's great. Uh, this one, I am only right here in it, but I can tell you that I'm going to absolutely love the rest of this. And it also ties in with these other two books and this it's the same, it's the same concept, just in different words, different ways, different examples, and gives you more information. So I just like seek out these kind of books because they keep me on track, they, they remind me, um, they help me, and I think that it's super necessary to read these. Nick actually just picked up uh, Men, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, and so we're both gonna read that. But a miscarriage is very hard on a relationship. It's hard on you first and foremost, but it's also very hard for your partner. So I think trying to remember how to treat each other and, and all that is super important. Um, with that being said, let's move on to some questions. I know I've been um, chatting your ear off for a little while, so I'll pull these up. This from August 30, 2017 just popped up on my phone. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to color my hair again. Someone said, um, did you realize what was going on and what was the healing process like physically? So no, I didn't know what was going on because I was out. But like I said, um, when I did go to Planned Parenthood for a DNC, it was virtually painless. Um, I was having a conversation with the nurse about my tattoos. It was over in about 10 minutes. Um, very easy. So this last one, no, I did not. I didn't, I, I was out. Um, so no, and that's one of the reasons why it's so expensive because they put you under and do the whole thing. Healing process physically. Um, there was just a little bit of cramping a couple days in three days in or so. Um, and you know, you can feel your insides kind of like healing up and stuff. But other than that, and like needing a lot of pads, I re recommend you having those ready before you get back from the hospital or Planned Parenthood or wherever it is that you're going. Um, you're gonna need those. And I had to send Nick into uh, CVS to get mine. So, um, so many, uh, how are you doing right now? Sending you love. Um, someone said, I'm currently going through my second missed miscarriage awaiting a natural passing. I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, keep an eye out for those. If they don't happen themselves, you need to go and get it handled. Um, you, it can make you septic if it just if if it doesn't actually happen naturally and even if it does happen naturally you need to go back and have an ultrasound to make sure that everything did come out because if there's any pieces of dead cells or anything stuck in there that can make you really sick um so just keep an eye on that do they know what caused it uh this is a great question no they don't um i actually had all of my blood levels tested before this happened and all of my levels of everything like were spot on like my progesterone like everything my doctor told me she i have a um a naturopath pathic doctor that i talked to through zoom and stuff she's in la jolla some of you guys actually go see her now because i've linked her for you uh she told me she i because i got a panel of them before i even know i was pregnant she's like your panels are actually like your panel's awesome so when she called me to go over my panel i was like surprise i'm actually pregnant and she was like well good for you because your levels like check out like everything's great like you're exactly where you'd want to be if you were pregnant like you know prenatal vitamins etc what was the first sign um there was no sign it was more so like a feeling that i had knowing that like something wasn't right like it just felt off um i don't know how to explain it i just felt like i knew you know does it make you scared to keep trying um yes uh it is, but I am also one stubborn and I don't take no for an answer. So yeah, uh, it, it is, um, it is a little scary. Cause you're like, what if it happens again? Like, and I told myself literally, and I shouldn't do this, but I told myself three days ago, I was like, if I try again and I have a miscarriage, like that's it for me. Like that's my sign. Like I'm not having any kids, but I'm just going to take every day by, I'm going to take every day as it comes and just see how I feel. But I don't wish it upon anyone to have a miscarriage, but unfortunately like reading your DMs, like it's very common and people have had them. Some people have them multiple times. So it, it sucks. More of a birth control question. How long were you on the pill? Do you think the pill played a part? Uh, 
No. So I actually had been off birth control for like a little over a year or so. Um, so it was completely out of my system. Went through this back or went through two back to back last year. Now have a baby girl. That is so awesome. Good for you. Um, I really appreciate all the kind words in here, you guys. I'm not going to read all of them or yeah, I won't read all of them because there's just so many sweet ones, but um, thank you for everyone who said so many sweet things. A couple of reoccurring ones that I saw were like, um, how do you deal with people invalidating your experience? Or, you know, I, when I went through it, it was made to feel like it wasn't a big deal and I couldn't talk about it or cope with it without ridicule. Um, I have to say that anyone that invalidates your feelings and makes you feel that way is not someone you want to surround yourself with. Um, and if it's family and you can't really not surround yourself with them, then you know, don't talk to them about it. Um, deal with it uh, with your, you know, by yourself um, in your own safe space and with people who love and care about you. Because even if it's the most minor thing and it doesn't make sense to them, they should support you. Like even when I felt like, well, why would it be that big of a deal? Whatever. I still was like, I'm so sorry. Like, what can I do to help you? Like if it was a friend or whatever, you, you, that's how you care about people you love. Just because you don't get it doesn't mean that it's not valid. And I feel like that's one of the biggest things with humans is like, just because you don't get it or you don't agree means that you don't have to respect someone else's thoughts or feelings. And that is just not how we should live our lives. It's just not healthy. It's not how I treat other people. And that's not how I will let people treat me. Uh, if people invalidated my feelings, you know, um, I think I'd have some choice words in a nice way and I wouldn't be around them anymore. Um, you deserve to be treated with respect. You deserve to have your feelings validated. And you know, if someone doesn't want to validate your feelings and you need to second guess, um, and think about your relationship with that person, because I don't think that they deserve to be around you. Did it have anything to do with your low testosterone? Um, no, I was actually somewhat within a reasonable range um, when it happened. However, you are not supposed to be on testosterone cream when you are pregnant or trying to get pregnant, which I did not know. I was not trying to get pregnant, but I wasn't on birth control. So had I known that, I probably would have rethought that. Um, I wish my doctor had told me that, she didn't. Um, but I stopped using it immediately and I did ask her if, uh, actually, you know, my levels were not within a normal range. I take that back. She told me that my levels were so low that when I, when I was pregnant, that the cream wouldn't have caused a miscarriage. Um, and I don't believe that having low testosterone causes a miscarriage. There's really no explanation most of the time to why someone has a miscarriage or what happened or what went wrong. Um, sometimes it's just the universe, it's God, it's, you know, it's just, the way it is and you could have handled everything perfectly um and it happens um it just it just happens sometimes it's just you know how it is your partner's role in their healing as well as yours um like i said i think that um i think that everyone handles it differently. And I don't think Nick felt the same way I did about it, but he did definitely support me in every way, shape and form that he could. Nick supported me basically as, as much as he could. And he did a great job. Um, whoever's supporting you obviously doesn't know exactly what you're going through. So you need to share your raw feelings and let them know that you're hurting. And you know, uh, any human with a soul is going to be receptive to that. Being someone who wants a baby, how do you feel about abortions? That is a loaded question. Um, I tend not to talk about this sort of thing um, just because it's so up to everyone's it, it, up to everyone individually. I'm pro-choice. Um, would I get one now? No, but it's easy for me to say because I'm in a loving relationship. I wasn't raped. Um, you know, there's so many different scenarios that go into that. I believe that everyone should have the ability to make their own choice for their own body where it gets a little dicey for me is when you're past a certain point in your pregnancy where a baby is like almost fully developed and you're aborting it. Like that's a little hard for me. That one, um, I, I personally don't agree with, but again, um, I feel like you should be able to do what you want with your body and people that are, making decisions like that, you know, 
they're doing the best that they can, but I just, I don't agree with that personally, but I also don't believe that it's necessarily my job to control what they do. So, um, like I said, I think I'm pro-choice, but up to a certain like period in pregnancy. Those are my thoughts. Um, we don't have to agree on those thoughts and that's okay. I respect your opinion uh, as long as you respect mine. And that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, how long was your pregnancy before miscarriage? I was six weeks as well. So when I went in there, they basically told me that my amniotic sac or whatever was like growing and is like, was like the age of like what would have been a nine week old fetus, but my fetus was only measuring six weeks. Um, so we were exactly the same on that. Have you gotten pregnant again after the miscarriage? No, I have not, um, but my period's supposed to start in about four days, and if it doesn't, then maybe I am. How did it affect your relationship? I feel like I kind of um, touched on this a little bit. It definitely is a very, it's very hard on a relationship, just like any traumatizing life event, uh, big or small, I feel like does put a strain on your relationship, and if you handle it with care, not that I did, I didn't handle it as well as I could have. I have a lot of other stressors in my life, business, YouTube, online ridicule, um, you know, so many other things that go into it, but it's very hard on a relationship, but as long as you like remember to respect your partner and know that they have your best interests in mind, if they do, of course, um, I feel like you can get through anything and it'll make you stronger. Does your mood change? Is there physical side effects and mental side effects? Yes, you're, you're, your levels are all over the place. Like you're like, I was very moody, um, very moody. I was super, super moody. I was like, it felt like almost like I was like PMSing the whole time, um, the whole pregnancy I would say, and throughout the miscarriage. And then after the miscarriage, obviously, I just felt like something got taken from me and I was even more upset. So if you can imagine that, um, just try not to take it out around the people, take it out on the people around you, which is why working out comes into play. Oh my gosh, someone's talking about their seven months postpartum from their stillborn. I can't even imagine. That would like be so, so, so hard. You guys are strong as f though. Like, don't forget that. Like you are strong and you can get through anything and whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And that's, you hear that all the time and it probably goes in one ear out the other, but truly like you can do anything you put your mind to dive into self-care and nurturing yourself and giving yourself whatever you want and just give yourself some grace. Like it's going to take time, but you guys can, you guys are stronger than you think. Okay. So I feel like I kind of answered most of these. Um, how was my body prepared for the pregnancy? It was actually really good. So like I said, all my levels were like spot on. Um, I actually have continued to do this belly oil that's for stretch marks. I've been putting it on my boobs because I did get a little bit of stretch marks on my boobs in the beginning of the pregnancy. My nipples also got a little bit bigger. Those are still bigger. I still have my stretch marks. Um, and so I've been putting that oil on my boobs and my belly and my butt and my thighs and stuff after every shower. And so that's what I've been doing. I'm also on prenatal vitamins. I also will leave you guys a link. I got a kit of these um, inexpensive pregnancy and ovulation strips and there's an app that you can use. Doesn't matter what one of these little strip brands you use. Like I, I'll link you to both, but like the app is called Premom and you take a picture of it and it tells you like when you're ovulating and stuff, it measures your levels. So I've been using that just to see what's going on and know. Um, and I'll leave that for you guys in the description box below if you wanna check that out. My camera is about to die and I've been talking your guys' ear off. So I'm gonna end here. If you have any questions that I didn't answer in this, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I will answer them as best I can. I'm really sorry if I didn't get to your question. I just didn't want this video to be like two hours long, but um, I would love to answer your question. I will be chatting with you guys in the comments um, when this goes live. So leave your question below and thank you for asking questions. I think it's really helpful for everyone to be able to like, maybe helpful for some people, not everyone, but like if I can even help like inspire or comfort at least one person, like it's worth it for me. And this is like a very taboo subject and like we as women need to support each other and you never know what someone's going through. So um, be kind, lift other people up and Treat others how you want to be treated, honestly. You never know what's going on in someone's life. Um, people have, were saying some really mean shit to me online when I was going through the miscarriage and it was so hard to deal with. It made it so much harder. So 
keep that in mind and yeah, just don't say mean shit to people. Don't, don't be a fucking dick. Like it's pretty simple. Uh, all right. My battery's going to die on me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave your comments below or your questions. Um, it doesn't matter how invasive it is. I will answer any questions. I'm an open book. Um, again, I will link everything for you guys in the description box below. Please check out those books. If, if it even sparks a little bit of your interest, you will not regret reading those books. I promise you. Um, and your significant other will thank me as well. <laughs> I did want to say if you're going through a miscarriage or you just went through one, you are not alone. Um, read the comments. There are so many of us that have gone through the same exact thing and can totally relate and support you. So spread love in the comments, you guys. Please keep an eye out for anyone that might be going through it and be their lifeline. Give them some love and give them some hope. And um, don't forget to give yourself yourselves grace if you're going through this. You deserve it. Um, keep your head up and take care, of your, take care of yourselves. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.